His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Sakhir Palace the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Royal Guard Special Force Commander Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and a number of officers. His Majesty was briefed on the plans to develop and modernize the weapons and units of the BDF, where His Majesty expressed pride in the BDF and its servicemen for their courage and dedicated efforts to perform their duties. His Majesty expressed pride in them and thanked them for their sincere and dedicated efforts to protect the progress that the people of Bahrain have achieved through their solidarity and cooperation. His Majesty hailed the role played by the BDF in cooperation with friendly and allied countries to secure freedom of maritime navigation in the region, thereby maintaining the flow of global trade. His Majesty wished them further success. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at the Palace. The cabinet commended the recent address of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa during an event honoring parents and top performing students across educational levels, praising students' distinguished achievements due to the kingdom's robust educational sector. The cabinet emphasized the importance of His Majesty's address, which noted that upskilling Bahraini citizens remains a cornerstone of the kingdom's comprehensive development. The cabinet also noted His Majesty's address on the the role of education in combating extremism, promoting social cohesion, which safeguard national stability. The cabinet also noted His Majesty's emphasis on Bahrain's call for global peace and stressed the importance of the national responsibility in preserving the kingdom's national assets, highlighting that the unity of its people is a national duty. On the occasion of His Majesty's Royal Order calling for the Shura and Representatives Councils to convene, the Cabinet underscored the importance of His Majesty's forthcoming address, which will kick-start the, the third session of the sixth legislative term. This address is expected to strengthen collaboration between the executive and legislative authorities. The Cabinet directed the relevant government ministerial committees to enhance work between both authorities for the benefit of all. The Cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding negotiations for a free trade agreement between the GCC and the United Kingdom. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the quarterly economic report for the first half of 2024, which showed a 2.3% annual GDP at constant prices, supported by a 3.1% increase in non-oil activities and non-Bahrainis working in the private sector saw a reduction of 2.1%. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance and National Economy and the Minister of Industry and Commerce regarding a resolution by the GCC Standing Committee for combating harmful practices in international trade to impose anti-dumping duties on several GCC imports. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Industry and Commerce regarding two draft resolutions to develop commercial registration procedures and a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding three proposals and two laws presented by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following. 
a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Labor and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the LMRA on the implementation of the Labor Registration Program. Since the launch of the program until September 2024, there was a reduction of 63% in the number of regular workers from 95,721 to 35,640 and a 98% increase in compliance establishment. The program conducted a total of 93,154 inspections and a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding developments on the Government Land Development Rights Program. The Cabinet then noted the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation at the Third Asian Cooperation Dialogue Summit. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the extraordinary 45th Ministerial Council meeting. The outcomes of the 122nd meeting of the Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee of the GCC. And the outcomes of the 10th meeting of the ministers responsible for Islamic affairs and endowments in the GCC. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Finance of Saudi Arabia Mohammed bin Abdullah Jad'an at Qadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the long-standing relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which continue to grow in line with the shared visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness noted the efforts of Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in enhancing the Bahrain Saudi partnership for the mutual benefit of both nations. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to advancing multi sectoral collaboration to create additional opportunities for all. For his part, the Saudi Finance Minister expressed his gratitude for His Royal Highness's efforts to strengthen bilateral relations and wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Group Chairman of Standard Charter, Dr. Jose Vinals, along with the bank's senior officials at Qadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness expressed his pride in the role of the Kingdom's vibrant banking and financial sectors in creating opportunities for Bahraini citizens and supporting the national economy, in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized the Kingdom's commitment to providing the banking and financial sector with the necessary support to enhance its contributions to the Kingdom's overall development. His Royal Highness highlighted Standard Chartered's contributions since its establishment in the Kingdom over 100 years ago, noting how the bank has provided numerous opportunities for citizens and attracting investments to the Kingdom. His Royal Highness emphasized the Kingdom's commitment to adopting initiatives and policies that further enhance and develop the banking and financial sectors. For his part, the group chairman expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, acknowledging his unwavering support for the sector. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Khalid Ibrahim Hamidan, also attended the meeting. At the invitation of the Chairman of the Saudi Shura Council, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Sheikh, a delegation from the Representatives Council headed by Speaker Ahmed Al will pay an official visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to enhance parliamentary cooperation between the two countries. The visit comes in light of the close Bahraini Saudi relations, which are witnessing development and progress, prominent integration, and continuous coordination, thanks to the keenness of His Majesty the King and the Saudi King, and in support of the efforts of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia. The visit will witness an official parliamentary meeting between the two sides to discuss ways of exchanging experiences in the legislative and parliamentary fields with the aim of enhancing joint work. Regional and international issues of common interest will also be discussed within the framework of enhancing Gulf integration to achieve the aspirations of the two brotherly peoples. The legislative authorities in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia have been keen to strengthen relations and joint cooperation in line with the vision of the leaders of the two countries to enhance joint work in various fields, including the legislative field. More on this report. Constructive cooperation between the two legislative authorities of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia to promote many aspects that serve the legislative work in the two brotherly countries. This cooperation comes in light of the close historical relations between the two countries, advanced cooperation in all fields, integration in all positions, and a growing strategic partnership that formed a distinguished model for strong brotherly relations.
His Majesty the King had praised the important role of the Shura and Representatives Councils in Bahrain and the Shura Council in Saudi Arabia in strengthening bilateral ties, brotherhood, and harmony between the two brotherly peoples and supporting the process of development advancement in the two countries, as His Majesty blessed during his meeting with the Chairman of the Shura Council in Saudi Arabia the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Bahraini Representatives Council and the Saudi Shura Council. The Memorandum of Understanding aims to develop and strengthen joint parliamentary cooperation in various fields related to encouraging the exchange of parliamentary delegations between the two parties, promoting common interest in the fields of sustainable development, innovation, exchanging parliamentary and diplomatic knowledge and expertise, in addition to consultation, coordination, and exchange of views on various issues of common interest. The memorandum also refers to holding bilateral parliamentary meetings for the purpose of parliamentary coordination on the sidelines of joint regional and international forums, exchanging visits and parliamentary events between the two sides and cooperating in various fields related to the general secretariats of the two councils, all of which comes in line with the parliamentary diplomacy undertaken by the legislative authority in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia in line with the vision of the leaders of the two brotherly countries to enhance joint work in various fields, including the legislative field. On the occasion of World Habitat Day, the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'al Lambarak, affirmed that Bahrain recognizes the importance of enhancing the youth's active role in developing the present and future. In light of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the minister also affirmed that the importance given to youth at the international level, especially in the field of urban development, comes at the forefront of UN and government priorities at the global level. He noted that the youth are the real capital for the future, noting that Bahrain is widely praised by the UNDP and the UN Office of Human Settlement for its continuous attention to urban development. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, affirmed that under the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahrain prioritizes investing in youth. She highlighted the significant role of young professionals in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. On the occasion of World Habitat Day, the Minister emphasized that Bahraini youth are a key pillar behind the development projects and programs in the Kingdom. She also pointed out that the UN Habitat's choice of engaging youth in shaping a better urban future as this year's World Habitat Day theme underscores the global focus on youth and urban development as a top priority for both international and government agendas. Under the slogan Engaging Youth in Creating a Better Urban Future, Bahrain joins the international community in celebrating World Habitat Day, which falls on October 7th, to highlight the 11th goal of the sustainable development. The Tender Board has launched the first phase of notifications in the electronic tendering system with eight new notifications now available to suppliers and contractors. This brings the total number of notifications to 37, aligning with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The chairman of the Tender Board, Yasser Ahmedan, emphasized the board's commitment to improving communication, digital transformation, and the application of electronic systems. The board is working to update notifications and channels to include all stages and procedures of tenders and bids, enhancing procurement systems, practices, and supplier and contractor participation. The launch of these notifications is part of the board's strategy to improve and enrich information provided to suppliers and contractors during the tender cycle.
The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhru, participated as a keynote speaker at the annual general ceremony of the American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain. The minister held deep-rooted historical relations between Bahrain and the U.S. that flourished over many decades with mutual respect and cooperation. He also reviewed a number of vital topics, including the free trade agreement, which contributed significantly and effectively to trade growth, as well as increasing the proportion of agricultural exports from the U.S. to Bahrain. For his part, the president of Amcham Bahrain, Qais al zabi noted that this annual event underscores the commitment of the Chamber of Commerce and the American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain to strengthening the strong bilateral ties. The Economic Development Board's efforts to attract more mega investments to the Kingdom of Bahrain continue through professional and strategic plans. More in this report. The Economic Development Board, the EDB, is actively working to attract foreign investments to further enhance the Kingdom of Bahrain's status as a regional financial hub. This initiative aligns with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, which focuses on diversifying income sources and further fostering a competitive, knowledge-based economy. The ADB is recognized as a strategic institution dedicated to further enhancing Bahrain's economic climate through the efforts of a skilled team. By implementing advanced plans, the ADB focuses on various domains that notably benefit the national economy. The ADB effectively promoted Bahrain as a prime investment destination, focusing on its economic strategies. To date, the board has attracted direct investment totaling 399 million Bahraini dinars, notably benefiting the industrial sector, followed by tourism and financial services. These investments are projected to create over 5,400 job opportunities in Bahrain over the next three years. The Kingdom of Bahrain offers a vibrant and supportive business environment strategically located in the Arabian Gulf as a regional hub for technology and industry. The ADB actively attracts investment through incentives and facilities for foreign investors, fostering innovation and infrastructure development. This approach further enhances the Bahraini economy and strengthens its global position, embodying the spirit of Team Bahrain. This approach further enhances the Bahraini economy and strengthens its global position, embodying the spirit of Team Bahrain. In a joint security operation, the Anti-Narcotics Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science, in cooperation with the Air Cargo Directorate of Customs Affairs, foiled the trafficking of 130,000 narcotics pills Captagon, worth around 640,000 BD. The joint operation included security and legal plans and procedures, and forming an integrated search team to build up an information received from the General Directorate of Drug Enforcement of the Qatari Interior Ministry. The operation resulted in foiling the trafficking attempt and the arrest of a woman, 38, over her involvement in the case. An investigation revealed that Lebanon was the source of narcotics seized inside a shipment of metal pipes at the air cargo port. Legal proceedings are being taken to refer the case to the public prosecution.